some of the best flying that you'll get uh, in the winter time is on these clear cold days because it's smooth as glass and it's beautiful out here but as you can see a lot of snow on the ground but it's very very cold uh, temperatures today uh, probably around minus 10 and um, I'm not going to stand out here very long because it is very very cold um, but we're going to prep ourselves make sure we got a good winterization kit on the airplane we got a good survival kit in the airplane just in case you know we need to use it so that's what it looks like today we're going to go out and you're welcome to ride along and i hope you enjoy the flight we'll see you in the air Alright, so we just got the airplane started and uh, we're letting everything power up and we'll load up our flight plan to where we're our destination airport. Like a gorgeous day, it might be a little bumpy, but we'll uh, check it out once we get airborne, see what the ride's like. We're actually going to head over towards Brainerd, Minnesota. All right, one thing you gotta be careful taxiing around on this airport and any northern Minnesota airport is the snow banks. As you can see out here, we've got these high snow banks. So sometimes if you taxi on the yellow line, it's gonna put your wingtip right into a snow bank. Plus there's areas of ice. So you gotta kind of be careful, make sure you don't uh, slip and slide on ice. But we're taxiing out to runway 18 and we're on the yellow line as we head down here. All right, we're going to go and do a checklist. All right, we're starting the doors. They're closed. Make sure they're both closed. And they are. And they're latched. Caps handle. Verifier pin is removed, and it is. Seat belt, shoulder harnesses, I'm secure. Seats are locked in place. Air conditioner is off. Fuel selector, it's confirmed to run a full tank. Fuel pump, it's on. Mixtures are full rich. Flaps, we're going to bring those down to 50%. I'm going to look out in the wing, make sure they go down on both sides. They are, and we have a light. Transponder set for uh, standby or squawk at 1200. Autopilot, we're going to go ahead and check that. All we're going to do is I'm just going to engage the autopilot in the heading mode here. Make sure my heading bug uh, is available out in front of me. I'm going to turn it left and right and make sure it does turn. I'm going to disconnect. <laughs> Make sure my disconnects work on both sides, left and right, and they do. I also like to make sure that I can overpower the system, and I can. So Autopod's been disconnected, and it's retrimmed. Now radios and GPSs were set direct to Brainerd. Um, I got my frequencies set up, so I have Duluth departure. I've got. Um, I've got. Uh, uh, Unicom as well as a was in there for cloquet for now. Cabin heat and defrost are set, brakes are held. We're going to power up to 1700 RPM. We're going to do a flow. We're going to check a few instruments here. Engine instruments, make sure they work correctly. Gives us also time to warm up the engine, get us well into the green arc before we depart. These cold temps, you got to wait a little bit. Make sure you're well into the green, otherwise, you can overboost the engine. All right, 1,700 RPMs, exhaust gas temperatures, cylinder temperatures. We're going to load up the alternators a bit, make sure they hold the load, which they do. Turn off any excess. They look good. Our oil pressure is good, oil temp's good, power set power, manifold pressure, and RPMs. We're going to do a mag check. Two clicks to the left, check in the right mag. Back to both. One click to the left, check in the left mag. And we're coming back to both. I'm going to bring the power back to approximately 1,000 RPMs. And then we're going to go back to our checklist and make sure we covered everything. All right, checklist. Power levers. Uh, 
back to a thousand already. So alternator has been checked. Our voltage was checked. Our pedo heat is off. Nav lights are as required. They're off. Landing light is on. We check our enunciators here. They all check. Magnetos are checked. Engine parameters are checked. Power lever, 1,000 RPMs. Flight information time altimeter is check and set. Flight controls, we'll check that real quick. They check. Trims are set for takeoff and autopilot. Let's just check our trims. Let's look on the aileron real, real quick and make sure that's trimmed up, and it is. Autopod's been disconnected. All right, next checklist. We're going to do a normal takeoff, rotate about 70 knots. And we'll do a climb checklist as we head on out. Okay, traffic. Cirrus 34701 is going to depart runway 18. Will be a right turn out to the... Uh, out to the west. Cool, okay, traffic. All right, looking good. Looks good. Down one base and final. No one's coming at us. Okay, Area is clear. Hey, okay, runway looks clear. No one's coming at us. We got a little crosswind from right to left. I'm gonna add a little bit of right aileron. Actually, full aileron initially, and then we'll bring it out as we roll down the runway. All right. Okay, we're advancing the power nice and smoothly, steering with our feet. All right. Power is full. Rolling down the runway. Okay, all right, we'll pick up that left wing as we bank into the wind and get the airplane airborne. Accelerating, flaps coming up. We got a good engine. Airplane's doing well. Hey, okay, coming up on 500 feet, caps is available. And we're making our right hand turn. as we head on out to the west. All right, so we're gonna go just check a couple things here. Indicated airspeed, altitude, hold mode. We're gonna climb the airplane up. Now we got a couple new cylinders on this airplane, actually three total, so we're gonna break in that engine and we're just gonna keep the power up. We're gonna run about 75% power today um, and vary it a little bit. What a gorgeous day for flying. Every day is a good day, even when it's cloudy and overcast. Still fun to be in the air. Okay, passing through 3,500 feet, going to 4,500 feet as we continue the climb. 4,000 for 4,500 feet. A little bit of a headwind today. But it just smoothed, smoothed out nice. Nice smooth flight here. Airplane's pitching over, starting its level off with the autopod. The autopod is flying the airplane. Climb checks, power set, flaps are up. Mixtures, we'll lean them out here in just a second. Your parameters are checked, fuel pump is coming off. We're going in the next checklist. All right, power. Airplane still accelerating. We're going to start reducing that power to about 75% power for a trip over. Flight 18, uh, 3 miles.
Exhaust gas temperature. See what that number is today. Slater County traffic. Skylark A124 Tango is 10 to the east, inbound for landing 21, touch go. Slater County. See how high she go today. About 1485, so we'll push it up back to the rich side of peak, and we'll set us up for about. 75 rich a peak for the break in. It's going to put us. Well, we're burning some gas, but. We'll, uh, hang out right at the bottom, about 75. It's going to be good for our trip over. That'll put us about 75% power. So 75 rich a peak, 75% power for the break in. Doing about 173 knots, true airspeed, putting us at ground speed about 154. Over, but the airplane's performing well. Got our flight plan in our four flight, so we can see what we're doing. It is a gorgeous day. Gorgeous day for flying. Looks like a little weather out to our west, so let's go back to the map page and just see what we got out there. <clears throat> yep, there's some snow coming, just looks like it's moving through the Fargo area, but still a good, good 150 miles west of our destination. So, shouldn't have any problem with weather for now and for our trip. Uh, Alright, our fuel pump, it's off. Cruise power, we're set for 75%. Mixture is lean as appropriate. Engine parameters are all monitored and the fuel flow and balance is good. Now what I like to do is I like to run about 10 gallons out of the tank and I switch. And I like to record my fuel <coughs> as I fly along. So Basically what I do is just draw a line like this. I got left tank and I got right tank. And then I just record when I hit about 10 gallons or whatever the actual number is, you know, 10.2, if I remember to switch it at 10, I'll write 10 gallons here. And then that way I know exactly how much fuel is burned out of every tank as I fly along. Gives me a little confidence, especially when I'm pushing the range a bit and I want to know exactly how many gallons I got in each tank. So we're about 56 miles from our destination. And today, based on the winds out of the southwest, I'm gonna guess that uh, ILS 2-3 is probably the approach that we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that approach up here. I'm just gonna go to my charts page, select approach. I'm gonna select Brainerd, Minnesota, ILS 2-3, and I'm gonna display the chart. I'll look at my trip page here and just see if I got any meat tires coming up. Uh, meat tires not available at the moment. Got some taps. Let's check out my status here. Meet tires. Back to meet tire. Well, nothing's there, but that's all right. Let's look at the forecast and see what that's showing. They're saying uh, 170 at 7. So overcast 5,000 at our destination. All right, so we're coming in from the east to Brainerd, Minnesota, and um, I've loaded up the approach plate. I'm going to go ahead and load up the procedure. I'm going to select the approach, ILS-23 via LaRue. I'm going to go ahead and activate that. I always like to load up an approach, even if I'm VFR. That way I make sure I'm landing on the right runway. So we're coming into LaRue, or direct LaRue now, because I just activated it. So we're going to make a right hand turn outbound. Looks like 231 is the inbound course, 051 is the outbound course. 
1099, it's in there twice. Cash 5197, Closer will required for procedure entry from the Inroot environment, but we have a GPS to substitute. Looks like Brainerd Lakes, ILS. Big one, Cash 5197, Zero Niner, helicopter traffic, 11 o'clock and uh, five miles, intercepting the arc for two one. He'll be turning southwest on four down. Twenty six seventy seven. It's in there. Top of we'll, the uh, turn A one. The common traffic battery frequency in there, which is twenty two. Four five zero. Actually, contact with our eighteen three. Put that in the active. One oh nine nine. It's in there twice. Final approach course inbound is two thirty one. Larue is. 2976, the height above the ground at LaRue is above 1,752 feet. Highless decision altitude is 1,424. We've got a 200 foot height above touchdown. Airport elevation is 1,232 with a touchdown zone elevation of 1,224. Minimum safe altitude around LaRue outer marker is 3,100 feet. Looks like the missed approach procedure is climbed to 2,100 feet, then climbing right turn to 3,000 direct to LaRue. Locator out of marker and hold is published. 5197, fighting 340. Heading up 340, 5197. ADF required, use local altimeter setting. If not received, use AKN altimeter setting. And pilot control lighting is 122.7, so we'll see that as we go along. Okay, it looks like 3000, LaRue procedure turn, one minute procedure turn. We'll take it down to us. We'll slide down the bottom when we get to our decision height. We're going to be looking for a pappy on the left with a medium approach light system with sequence flashing lights. Otherwise, we're going to climb straight ahead to 2,100 feet, and then a right turn 3,000, direct to LaRue, and hold as possible. approach, helicopter 4, Time for this Inbound approach. Four, sure. There's three, Inbound 11, four, going for this for localizer. Four, and, uh, at 100 knots, we're going to be 531 on our glide slope rate of descent. Uh, full stop, 4, Echo 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 4, Right above touchdown, one more half mile of visibility is all that's required. We're going to have that today with no problem. And uh, if we do lose the glide slope, we'll use a localizer minimum of 1680. 454, I'm sorry, 456, which is going to be our height above touchdown. Um, or, sorry, uh, minimum descent altitude will be 1680. And our uh, will put us 456 feet above the ground. So, good briefing. And we are ready to go for this approach as we get a little closer. Engines are running good. All right. Looking good. We're about 38 miles away. We're going to go ahead and run that descent checklist now just so that we get it behind us. We have the airport site when it helps. Ghost 5197. Let's go back to Ghost 5197. Roger. Uh, maintain a present heading for No problem. Well, we fought back again Six as well. Ghost 5197. Ghost 5197. Roger. Uh, you can expect this heading. If you want to slow down, it may help you. But I just got one in on two one. All right. A little ways out yet. Don't quite pick it up yet. And we finally got an A, an AWAS reading here. Looks like 188.11, altimeter's 295.7. Well, that's the closest we got. We'll get the AWAS once we get a little bit closer. It's nice having weather on our multifunction display, um, along with forecasts. Peace of mind so we know what to expect before we even get there. Winds are still pretty strong though, still 30 knot wind off the nose, slightly southwest wind, slowing us down across the ground. Okay, we burned about 5 gallons off the left tank, so we'll switch over to the right tank once we hit about 10 gallons of burned off the left. Yeah, pretty fortunate that God has made such a beautiful place, and uh, I'm really uh, 
feel really fortunate that I have the opportunity to fly an airplane. So, this is a pretty amazing place from this view. And I hope more people take up the opportunity to learn how to fly because they're the best nation in the world to, to fly in. bit of clouds out in the distance but they look like they're above us it's like a maybe scattered a broken layer should be no factor for us and we're monitoring a little ways away from Brainerd yet don't quite pick up the AWAS Now you can't see out the window, but here in northern Minnesota, we're the land of 10,000 lakes. So there's there's roads out in these lakes, and there's people out there with their their trucks and their cars and their their little villages fishing fishing for walleye and northern panfish. Pretty awesome place. This time of year, it's chilly. It's cold, a lot of ice, probably a uh, good two feet of ice out in many of those lakes. Good foot and a half to two feet. 22 miles from our LaRue, where we begin our procedure turn and then proceed inbound on the ILS. ILS is for instrument landing system. I can see Mille Lacs Lake out there in the distance, and, and from here you can see all of the roads, as well as uh, as well as many of the fish houses and, that are. Uh, yeah, both center shot forty two sixty two. Nice. Yeah, forty two sixty two. Go ahead. Take a chill. Sky was forty two sixty two on the ground. Yeah, it was forty two sixty two. Everything in place, and thank you. Thank you. Like the uh, winds. Uh, Twilight 95, uh, contact Minneapolis, center 132.15 today. Runway 16, but we'll use 23, about 190, so it's kind of a cross between. Um, United 47, contact Minneapolis, center 123.72 today. 6 at Brainerd, but we're going to use. Uh, we're going to use. Uh, 23 for the ILS. A little bumpy over here, though. Can bounced around a little bit. You might notice on the on the camera, but nothing too uh, too concerning. We're starting to descend down to uh, three thousand feet now. Check the log clear. Which will be our intercept altitude for the procedure turn at La Rue. Twenty four Minneapolis. We're going to give our local traffic call, let them know what we're up to. Raider traffic, Cirrus 3470, miles about 10 miles, well, over east of LaRue, about 10 east of LaRue, or about uh, 16 east of uh, Brainerd, inbound for the practice ILS 2 3 approach at Brainerd traffic. Now, a 5T check that I use, and I used it even as an airline pilot, um, it just helps keep you out of trouble. You know, throttle, we're going to slow the airplane down, uh, make sure we twist it to our inbound course, we'll set our heading bug to the desired course that we want to turn to in the procedure turn. We'll note the time, it's a one minute holding pattern or procedure turn, we need to note our time. And we'll talk on the radio and let traffic know what we're up to and let ETC know what we're doing if we're filed. And once we turn inbound, we'll make sure our approaches are armed, and we'll set our flaps to approach, make sure our boost pump's on, our mixture's rich and the fuel's on a good tank. Still about eight and a half gallons used. We haven't switched tanks yet, but we'll do that shortly. Midwest 620, thank you to send a pilot's discussion and maintain 5,000. The Baudet Altimeter 29 or 62, advise that Baudet Automated Weather and Requested Approach. Okay, still doing about 165 knots, so I'm going to start slowing the airplane down now because we're coming up for a couple minutes from our uh, initial approach fix. So I'm going to reduce the power. Brainer traffic. Cirrus 3470 Romeo is uh, 
three and a half miles from LaRue, and we're going to uh, do a procedure turn and proceed inbound ILS 23, Brainerd. The that. The wind cone light is out of service, and ILS Renee 30 is out of service. Anyway, we're coming up on nine gallons. I'm going to go boost pump on. I'm going to switch my tanks, and I'm going to write it down so I know how many gallons they burnt out of the left tank <clears throat> as we proceed inbound. I know I'm on the fullest tank for the landing. Descent checks, altimeters are set, cabin heat defrost is where I want it, landing light is on, fuel systems managed, mixtures and brake pressures are set. Next checklist, for landing, shoulder harness, seatbelt secure, fuel pump it's on. Mixtures are set. Flaps will be coming to approach here shortly. And then we'll turn off the autopilot. Everything is looking good. Starting to slow the airplane down nicely. As we come up to our initial approach fix. Printer traffic, Cirrus 347, Cirrus mail is approaching LaRue, procedure turn outbound, ILS 23, printer traffic. Okay, there's the marker beacon. I'm going to go ahead and dismute that. So I'm going to listen to it. Looks like our we're going to make a right turn to 053 here in about two seconds. All right, clear on the right. And it is, and we're making that right-hand turn throttle. It is set. We just twisted to the inbound course. We're going to set our heading bug, and we're going to turn to the outbound. We'll note the time when we come abeam our point. I like to keep my bearing pointer on for that, just so I can see when I'm abeam the point. So I can start the time. I got the airplane slowed up to 120 knots nicely. For procedure turn outbound, we're almost a beam LaRue here shortly. And we'll notice that the time will start on our Garmin, indicating that we're a beam the fix. Okay. Okay, the time just started. We're going to go outbound for one minute. We're full needle deflection. <clears throat> and we'll give them a call. Brainer traffic 347 Cerro Mayo, 22, procedure turn outbound, LaRue. And it'll put us about uh, five to six miles out of ILS 23. And it'll be at 3,000 feet. minutes outbound and we're looking good all right we'll go ahead and FMB 680 Mike Whiskey could visit approach Grand Rapids Airport change of advisory frequency is proof for Fort Charlotte time on the ground through flight service as we turn inbound we're going to finish the checklist again we're going to do the rest of the checklist November 680 Mike Whiskey Roger IFR cancellation is received set. we're twisting we'll the later. inbound making that right hand turn now to the inbound. Our time is up. Romeo, I have a cancellation. Thank you. Talked on the radio. We're going to bring our flaps to approach. And we're going to watch that our approach arms, because we're doing this coupled with the island, with the, uh, with the other. November 7210, Romeo, thank you. And did you pick up any icing? November 7210, Romeo, thank you for that. The course is active, continuing to make that right-hand turn. And we just switched over to V-Lock, which is ground-based navigation for the ILS. It did it automatically. It also automatically armed the approach. So we're using an Avidyne DFC-90 autopilot, and it does a really nice job capturing our course and doing it all automatically. I just use the nav mode and we use the GPS steering mode. Okay, it's joining the inbound. We're at 100 knots, slowed up nicely. We're two miles from our final approach fix. Or we're going to
going to pick up the glide slope and we'll fly it on down. Here at 3,000 feet, winds are about 197, so slight crosswind from the left at about 11 knots. That way I kind of know how much crab I need to put into the airplane to make sure that we fly on the center of that course. Making small corrections. I always tell people five degrees outside the final approach fix corrections, two degrees from the final approach fix to the runway. Small corrections to stay on the course. Maintaining 100 knots or one mile from our final approach fix. Predator traffic Cirrus 3470 mail is approaching uh, LaRue, five mile final, ILS 23 Predator traffic. So again, throttle, it's set, we're twisted to our inbound turn, we've turned inbound. Six two zero, go ahead. Time, not required, talk, we've talked in the radio, approach is armed, flaps are at approach, boost pumps are on, mixture is rich, we're on a... Midwest Okay, coming over LaRue now. And we use a power pitch roll technique, meaning we'll reduce the power. We'll pitch the Midwest nose down. Carby. And uh, turn if we need to turn. Okay, we've captured the glide slope now. Now we're just gently pitching over. We're going to reduce that power back to maintain our airspeed at right around 100 knots in the descent. So power controls airspeed on the glide, on the, uh, glide slope. Power controls airspeed, pitch controls. Power controls airspeed, pitch controls our altitude as well as our glide slope on the on the approach. Using small adjustments. So at 100 knots, everything's looking good. We're ready for landing. Hopefully you're getting a great view of our runway. One thing I'm going to do, I'm going to keep our runway lights. That's seven clicks. Make sure our approach lights are on high. So when we break out of the clouds, we can see everything and it's lit up like a Christmas tree down there. All power adjustments to maintain airspeed. Printer traffic Cirrus 3470 mail is three mile final. Pilots 23 printer traffic. Everything's configured for landing. Flaps 50%. But I am going to bring in full flaps when we get uh, when we get down by the runway. <clears throat> Help keeping from uh, you know landing very long. <clears throat> And we'll transition, we'll pitch to maintain the glide slope as we get down to our decision height when we disconnect the autopot and add full flaps. We're going to pitch the nose down to maintain glide slope. <clears throat> Airplane's doing a nice job in the descent down to our decision height. 500 feet above, 500. Our, <clears throat> above the ground. Plane's flying well. 200 feet above our decision height. Airplane's, everything's good. We're on the glide slope on the localizer. 100 feet above decision height. Yeah, we're sending TV up 3134 is on board. You just passed 250. November 3134, Midian. Okay, there's the first time the flight is disconnected. There's 2905, Ford, confirming the automated weather and for aircraft. Just to make sure that the flight is safe. Three, one. Two reds. For TBS 3134, and I'm currently going direct Zumblu, if that's correct, if that's correct. November 3134, Roger, and maintain at above 3,500, till we'll establish on a public portion of the truck. A little crossing left to right, a little bit of left alien, some right rudder to hold the glide. Center maintain 3,500, maintain 3,500. The approach, clear for the RNAV approach runway 31, TVM 3134. Okay, just landed the airplane, nice landing, keeping that one wheel off as I bank into the wind. Keeping the airplane on the center line. Caution, under stage. Okay, we've landed the airplane. We're going to add some brakes here, and we're going to make a left turn at Alpha 3. That taxi over and visit the people we need to visit. 
then I'll let you guys ride along on the next trip. Stop and let's do an after landing checklist. After landing, the power lever is back at 1,000 RPMs. Fuel pump has been turned off. Okay. Flaps are up. Transponder squawk and standby. Lights as, as required and pitot heat it is off. And uh, under the next checklist, we'll do the shutdown when we get over by the ramp. But other than that, thanks a lot for riding along with me. I uh, hope you enjoyed the flight, and hopefully we catch you on the next flight. Um, so please subscribe if you like what you saw, and uh, we'll see you in the next trip.